I'm Neil Lawson, uh, and I'm chair of Compass. Uh, we've come a long way from the Institute of Education and speeches by Gordon Brown. Uh, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it's definitely a thing. I've followed my brief. I was told that I had to speak about personal experience, and I've had some fantastic speeches today, but not all of them were about personal experience, so I'm following my brief and being a good person. And I'm going to do change, two, uh, three things in my, in my time and hopefully get some questions in at the end. I'm going to talk about change, change in me. I'm going to talk about change um, now, what's happening. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, changing compass. So change me. And I thought I was going to have a PowerPoint, right? And the participatory bit of this is that I was going to put some images up, and I can't because there isn't a PowerPoint. So part of the participatory point is that you're going to have to think of some images while I'm speaking, OK? So if you could join in, that would be absolutely brilliant. And the first image you're going to think about is a, an image of the wind and the sun. Um, and the bit for this bit is the kind of notion that if you want to be a rebel, then you have to be kind. And the point of the wind and the sun, which you're imagining in your brain as I'm talking, is the Aesop fable. Are you familiar with the Aesop fable that says the wind and the sun had the bet about the person walking down the street and who can get the person, the traveller, to take, take their coat off? Uh, and the wind goes first and blows really, really hard and tries to force the, the coat off of the traveller, and it doesn't work because they do the coat up tighter, and the sun comes out and starts shining and warms the, the traveller up, and so they take their coat off. How do you make change happen? And the bit that relates to me there is that I wrote an article a couple of years ago about something called the feral elite in the middle of the bankers and the... And the uh, who were cheating, and the politicians who were cheating, and the judges, and the police, and everyone was cheating. I wrote a, an article for The Guardian about the feral elite, and I regretted it as soon as I'd written it. Because why do I want to talk about a feral elite? Why do I want to hate a group of people? Why do I want to use stuff which then gets used back against you? Can you win by uh, defeating the other side. I spent all of my political life trying to build a, an army that's bigger than their army, to smash their army. And I don't believe in that anymore. I don't believe in smashing anyone. I believe in understanding. I believe in empathy. I believe in talking. I believe in getting around people. I believe in bringing people onto our side. Um, that if you live by the sword, then you die by the sword. And I don't believe in that kind of politics anymore. So I don't want to do that. I want to be a rebel, and I want to be kind. And I think that we ought to be the kind of change we wish to see in the world and that we should really mean it. Okay, that's the first bit of change me. The second bit, in the image that I want you to conjure up, is of a supermarket uh, a, a toy. You know the trains or the buses that they have that you put your kids in and put 10 pence in and the things move up and down and your kids, if you've got kids or you've seen them, pressing the buttons and making the lights work and the bells ring and all of that. Well, that's my metaphor um, for change as far as politicians are concerned, because I've spent 30 years of my life trying to lobby politicians to get them to do the right thing and to be brave. And when I look at politicians now, 20-odd um, uh, years ago, um, I would put my two sons in those trains, and they would sit there and they would press the buttons and make the bells ring and make the lights flash. And that's what I think of when I look at politicians today. People who sit in places and think that they're making the world change and make things happen, but actually they're just like our kids, my kids, because actually they don't have any power, they don't have any influence, they're not making anything change. And Mark said, we make history, but not in conditions of our own choosing. Uh, where are the big waves? Where's the big social change coming from? How are you connected? You can have your surfboard, but if you're just in the shallow end, not connected to a wave, not connected to a movement, then nothing is ever going to change and nothing is ever going to happen. So how can you be connected to where the energy and the power is? I'm, becoming, uh, I'm not becoming a Marxist, but I'm thinking more about Hayek. Hayek was the person who wrote the book called The, Surf, the, the Road to Serfdom, which is the Bible of the neoliberals. He wrote it in 1948, and then he had the discipline to tell his people, don't go near the politicians. Wait for the politicians to come to you. 30 years later, he had his neoliberal revolution when Reagan and Thatcher and people came to him and his ideas. Now, it's quite a tough discipline, right? But my message, my predominant kind of view increasingly is build the ideas, build the social movement, 
Don't compromise yourself by getting too close to the politicians because they won't do what you want them to do. They're just kids sitting in the train pushing the buttons. We have to build the movements. We have to be connected. We have to force our way into making change happen and not wait for it to be done to us and, and for us. The third bit about Change Me and what you're going to think about now in your minds is a brick on a table connected to a piece of elastic and someone pulling the piece of elastic. Because what I'm trying to tell you is that change happens slowly, 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 and then really, really, really fast. Um, I understand this because I have the world record for failing physics O-level, physics GCSE. Um, I went to a technical school for reasons I won't elaborate on, and they made you take physics uh, O-level. And I took it five times, and I failed it every single time. Um, and the only thing that I remember was this experiment with the brick and the elastic and pulling the piece of pulling the brick with the piece of elastic and nothing happening then all of a sudden ping it's in your lap because we don't know what's possible until it happens right that we think nothing's going to change then all of a sudden it does if you'd have asked anyone walking around Berlin on the 8th of November 9th, 1989 whether the wall's going to fall tomorrow they'd have said don't be bloody stupid right we don't know when things are going to happen, but they do. They always change. And I think things are going to start changing now. And I think things are going to start changing because of the fall of the wall and the end of the Soviet Union. They're going to start changing because of 2008 and the, and the way in which ne neoliberalism and capitalism has been discredited. And they're going to change because of the rise of the digital society, the network society, the peer-to-peer -peer society, the thing that puts us in connection with everyone, to know everything, to understand everything, to mobilize people. That's going to start because on... In this ever-flattening world, being flattened by digitization, people can behave in a more democratic and egalitarian way. They don't only behave in that way, it will be contested, but we have the chance and the possibility to be more egalitarian and more democratic, and I think things could start changing very quickly. So the change now bit is obviously Greece, Spain, Scotland, all sorts of communities, all sorts of places, joining up, connecting, getting bored of the old political system, recognizing that things can come from them, that they are the wave, they can create the wave, they can make things happen. So I'm more optimistic than I have ever been in my 30 years of life, but it's always about politics too, right? It's always about politics too and what you can do. And I think in order to, do, to make the change happen we want to see, we have to reinvent ourselves. We have to reinvent our organizations. Compass, the organization I chair, the, the organization that's helped put on today with people like David and hit the fantastic people that have been working with him to make today happen. A round of applause for David and the people who have made it happen today. Thank you very much. Is that we had the willingness, the appetite to change. We came out, the Compass was an organization that was pretty firmly located in the Labour Party. And we voted and made the decision to come out of that. And it was painful. It was tough. We lost people. We had people that attacked us. Um, but we thought it was the right thing to do. To change the world, you have to start changing yourself. Um, I would say this, wouldn't I? But I think Compass is quite a unique organization in the sense that it is developing. It is on a journey. It does see so much. We try to see so much. We try to see the local and the global. We try to see the red and the green. We talk about visions of a good society. We talk about policies for a good society. And we talk about movements for a good society. Um, it's a special thing to be able to try and do all of that stuff. It's difficult, but we're trying to do it. And we know more than anything that we'll win our good society by the size of our dreams and the warmth of our hearts. We will win through love and we will win through compassion. We win because we know that all of us are smarter than any one of us. And we'll win because our job, as Ray Raymond Williams said, is to make hope possible rather than despair convincing. I think this is a moment to make hope possible. Days like today make hope possible. I think the brick is about to start to move. It's about to start to move for you, your campaigns, your issues, and it's, start, and it's about to start to move for Compass. And things are going to move very quickly, and we have to be alive for it. Let's get a few questions in, shall we? Five minutes. Come on, come on, don't clap. Last questions. That was first hand there. Thank you. So you started by saying uh, don't 
don't wait for the politicians, yeah. uh, but politicians are members of Compass. So can you yeah. say more about how you want to work with politicians and what their role is in this movement? Or some of them, anyway. Yeah, the good ones, the ones who want to be open, the ones who want to be non-tribal, the ones who don't have the blooming ego to think that it's all about them, the people that you know, want to create the spaces. The politician of the future is the person that opens up the space for us to do it, to create the, the, you know, the platforms, the resources. That's what we need to look for. Who are the politicians that see that, rather than the politicians who think they're, they're steering the wheel you know, and putting their foot on the pedal when nothing's really happening? Because that's the old industrial industrial 19th, 20th century way of doing things. So let's find the politicians in Labour, in the SNP, implied, in the Greens, in all sorts of places that want to do that kind of politics. And I think it's a different sense of what a politician is and a very different sense of leadership. Right, someone else, a woman? You say that the politicians are uh, impotent and not doing anything, but this coalition is doing a pretty good demolition job on handing power out to their buddies in the business community. Yeah, 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 and that and that's in a sense why we talk in Compass. You know, a lot of us talk about the notion of a bridge, a bridge between the vertical party politics and the horizontal. And how do you bring the two together? How do you connect? Because you, we are going to need a bit of state power if we want to sort out the bond market, right? You can't do everything in your community, but actually, that's. That's the richer, better part. So it's about both of those things, about, about building a bridge between the old vertical politics and the new horizontal, and that's what we're interested in. More questions? Thank you, hello. Uh, th 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 thank you, Neil, Neil. I, so I've been following Compass for many, many years, uh, supported you throughout the Good Society stuff and before then. Um, most people want to organise around issues that affect their lives, not just about political parties and individual politicians, etc. What does Compass offer the asset-based community development kind of agenda that's happening outside our front doors? Yeah, I think we're, I think we're, you know, we're trying to do that job of kind of helping to join up because you see politics in a silo. You see people who think it's all about this or it's all about that, and if you just did this one thing. And it's not, it's so much more complicated. And can we create the spaces in which people can start to understand, join up, co-create, um, uh, cooperate in a way that crosses individual issues, that crosses individual parties, and creates a kind of negotiated sense of what the future is more than anything, right, the most important thing is just how we behave. If we behave in the right kind of way together, if we show love, if we show compassion, if we show empathy, if we show care, then we start breaking down all of the barriers. Because I just know, right, that the old stuff isn't working and doing the same thing and expecting a different outcome, you know, it doesn't work. And we keep challenging ourselves in this organization. It's tough, you know, to learn, to move on, to, 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 to change. You lose some people, we might be gaining more, but look, kind of the world's, I'm trying to say the world is shifting. This is our time to kind of think differently and behave differently and win more people. People are desperate. They are desperate for something better than what's, off, what's on offer. And, the, and some of the great people are still in the traditional political parties. Some are in the kind of newer surging SNP and Green parties. It's going to take all of us, right? It's going to take all of us to break this kind of broken democratic system, to, 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 to change this kind of awful economics which puts profit before people. That's why I've loved today, because it's a sharing of so many experiences and so many people and so many traditions and so many different types of people. This is what the future is going to look like in politics. We need to do an awful lot more of it, and that's my time, and I'm really so grateful for everyone being here. Thank you so much. <laughs>